With that being said, I appreciate that, Brother Rashad, um, who's my esteemed reader and colleague today. Uh, my name is Brother Jared here at the Israel God Baltimore location. And today's lesson that we'll be dealing with is taking the Lord's name in vain. Taking the Lord's name in vain. Because there is a lot of people who have this understanding misconstrued of what does it mean to take the name's Lord in vain. The, uh, the, the, the name of the Lord in vain. And we want to make sure that we take our time and walk down with understanding what this is actually talking about. So that way you can ensure that you have a way to avoid taking his name in vain. Okay? Now, we're going to go ahead and get this lesson started in Deuteronomy chapter 5. Because... In Exodus chapter 20, he gave the statement, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord of God in vain, but he reiterates a lot of the commandments in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 5 is almost a mirror image of Exodus chapter 20. Mm -hmm. So in Deuteronomy chapter 5, let's go ahead and get this lesson started, because when you understand the seriousness of this, you may consider. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 5, and 1 verse, verse 11, when you get there, go ahead and read. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, uh -huh. for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Because you will not be held guiltless or not guilty if you are taking his name in vain. Now, I want to hear the definition real quick. I want to hear a definition uh, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary of what vain actually means. Go ahead and give me that definition. Vain. Having to show undue or excessive pride in one's appearance or achievements. Actually, only the highlighted portions. That's because, because that right there is someone dealing in vanity. In other words, that's pride. That's different from the vein that this verse is speaking about. Give me the highlighted verse, a portion. Go ahead. Marked for futility and infect in ineffectualness. Right. And futility or ineffectual. In other words, for nothing. Go ahead. Hit the next one. Having no real value. Having no real value. Like fool's gold doesn't have real value. Go ahead. Idle, worthless. It's idle or it's worthless. Do not take the name of the Lord God in vain. And we're going to walk this down. Is that the end of that? There's one more. Go ahead, go ahead the last one. To no end or without success or result. Oh, to not obtain success or to get a result from it. And we're going to walk down how you can end up taking the Lord's name in vain to where there is no success, it's futile, or, or what they say, an exercise of futility, there is no result. In other words, you're doing this for nothing. Now let's go to Isaiah chapter 38, because we need to establish a foundation showing that the Lord of God does hear men and women upon the earth in their supplications and prayers. So we have to show a few examples of this. Isaiah chapter 38, and we're going to get this started at verse 1. When you get there, go ahead and read. And if we're going too fast, please note the scriptures down. That way you can go back over them. If you really need them, we can supply you with all the scriptures. So that way you don't miss a beat. Isaiah 38 and verse 1, when you get there, go ahead and read. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. So this is King Hezekiah. He was a righteous king. He was sick unto death. Go ahead. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Right, because, because he's being righteous, he even has a little bit of heads up or foreknowledge of what's to come, and even in regards to his own life. Because he said, You shall die and not live. Go ahead. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall. And prayed unto the Lord. So he turned and did what? He prayed unto the Lord. Go ahead. And said, remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee how, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. So before he even makes a reference to what his supplication or what he's asking for, he's saying, consider my record. How that I walked before thee in truth with a perfect heart. Go ahead. And have done that which is good in thy sight. Uh-huh. And Hezekiah wept sore. Yep, go ahead. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Right. Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. Now that is a fruitful prayer. It was heard. The Lord weighed him, and he said, I will even add unto you 15 more years. Go ahead. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. Right. In other words, he even told him some future prophecy that was going to happen even beyond us. 
Now go down to verse 20. Because his prayer was heard, he was given good advice as what to do. Verse 20, go ahead. The Lord was ready to save me. Therefore, we will sing my songs to the, to the stringed instruments all the days of our life right. in the house of the Lord. Keep going. For Isaiah had said, let me take a lump of figs and lay it for a plaster upon the boil, uh -huh. and he shall recover. So he even gave him some advice on, or, or a remedy of what to do with that particular illness. But that came after the Lord said, I will add unto thee 15 years into your life. So the Lord does hear and does answer prayers because Isaiah didn't even get a chance to go to his house before that prayer was answered instantaneously. Now let's go to Daniel chapter 9 and see another instance of the Lord actually answering a prayer or a supplication. Daniel 9, and we're going to pick this up at verse 1, and then we're going to go 1 through 4, and we're going to skip. Daniel 9 and verse 1, when you get there, go ahead and read. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, uh -huh. of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. Uh -huh. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of years, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So Daniel was studying the prophets or the Old Testament, trying to understand how long this captivity was going to last for. Mm -hmm. And he understood by reading these books that the captivity would go for 70 years, but he did not see people making preparations to go home. So he's saying that something isn't right here, but he knows the Lord isn't lying. So uh, as they say, maybe the Lord ain't uh, speaking fast. Maybe I'm listening slow. So he's trying to say, okay, there's something going on with my understanding. I'm missing something. So what did he do to try to catch up with the understanding? Verse 3. And I set my face unto the Lord God right. to seek by prayer and supplications uh -huh. with fasting and sackcloth oh, and ashes. He, he even added in with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. But it, well, there's still the same prayers and supplications. When you add fasting to your prayers and supplications, that just shows the amount of sincerity or the, the severity of how bad you want what you're praying for. Go ahead. And I prayed unto the Lord my God uh -huh. and made my confession. And made my confession. That's confession of your sins. Go ahead. And said, uh -huh. O Lord, the great and dreadful God, right. keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. Right. To, to, to them that do what? That love him and do what? Keep his commandments. Oh, that's who he's showing it towards. Go ahead. Keeping the covenant and the mercy towards. Go ahead. We have sinned and have committed iniquity. Oh, but we have sinned and committed iniquity. Go ahead. And have done wickedly. Uh-huh. And have rebelled. Uh -huh. Even by departing from the precepts and from thy judgments. That's right. That's from what he instructed us to do. Give verse 6. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants the prophets. Actually, let's jump down to verse 21. Jump down to 21. Jump down to 21. When you get there, go ahead and read. Yeah, whilst I was speaking in prayer. While I was in the middle of speaking my prayer, go ahead. Even the man Gabriel, whom I have seen in the visions at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the even oblations. Right. Now all of a sudden, Gabriel the angel shows up in the middle of his prayer. And Gabriel the angel, every time he shows up, somebody learns something. Go ahead. And he informed me. He did what? Informed he me. He informed me because he prayed for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And this angel showed up to give him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Go ahead. And talk with me and said, uh -huh. Oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. What was the mission of him coming there? To give him skill and understanding. Go ahead and uh, go to uh, 23. 23. At the beginning of thy supplications. At the beginning of your supplications. At the beginning of your prayers. At the beginning of you seeking God in righteousness. Go ahead. The commandment came forth. The, the what came forth? Commandment. The commandment because Gabriel is commanded to give men understanding. They don't just get it by themselves and Gabriel doesn't just go off his own accord. He has to be commanded to give this man understanding. And it's given to those that keep the commandments of God. Go ahead. And I am come to show thee. And I am come to show you. Go ahead. For thou art greatly beloved. Because you are greatly beloved. And why are you greatly beloved? Because you are keeping his commandments. He's in captivity, but he's doing it to the best of his ability. Mm -hmm. That's the end of verse 23. 
that was the middle of 23. Oh, go ahead, finish it off. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Right, therefore, get this understanding and consider this vision that you were reading out of the book of Jeremiah, the prophet, mm -hmm. that you said, I'm not understanding something about. Mm -hmm. now, now, if he were to say, oh, this is just a bunch of, uh, a bunch of foolishness, this don't make an understanding, it's not happening, I don't believe, he threw it out the back door. Then he wouldn't have sought the Lord and the angel wouldn't have showed up to give him this understanding. Now go to Daniel chapter 10 and pick it up at verse 7. Daniel 10 and verse 7. When you get there, go ahead and read. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. Right. For the men that were with me saw not the vision. Right. So there's other people around at this time, but they don't see this vision that he's given him. Go ahead. But a great quaking fell upon them. Right. So that they fled to hide themselves. Right. All they knew is that there was an earthquake and now they are hiding themselves. But give me verse 11. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright. For unto thee am I now sent. Uh-huh. So he said, I I'm sent unto you. Go ahead. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. But so he's standing there trembling because he's actually having an interaction with the angel that came from the Lord. But what is this angel about to show him? Give me verse 21. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. I will show you that was in, uh, noted in the what? The scripture of truth. I'm about to give you understanding of these scriptures. Mm -hmm. These scriptures of truth. Go ahead. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael, your prince. Right. Michael came and backed him up to bring him that understanding because the prince of Persia was still him. In other words, Satan did not want him to even give him that message of understanding. Mm -hmm. But now let's keep this going. Let's go to Psalms 111. Let's go to Psalms 111. Satan had withheld him a number of days, so that way he thought that he could stop Daniel from getting that understanding. But that entire time, Daniel was still fasting and praying and making supplication. Psalms 111 and verse 9, when you get there, go ahead and read. He sent redemption unto his people. The Lord sent, redemp uh, sent redemption unto his people. Go ahead. He hath commanded his covenant forever. He's commanded his what? Covenant. His covenant forever. We read that covenant. We read those commandments when we opened up the class in Exodus chapter 20. Mm -hmm. Forever. Go ahead. Holy and reverend is his name. Holy and reverend is his name. If a man's walking around wearing that title on his chest, he is trying to wear the name that's given only unto the Lord. Because mm -hmm. the Lord never gave any man holy and reverend. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of you getting this wisdom. Go ahead. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. A good understanding. There's people that have some understanding, but it's not necessarily good. It's a corrupted understanding because they've been eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Do y'all see that? Finish verse 10. His praise endureth forever. His praise endureth forever. But those that don't have this understanding, they aren't by themselves. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 21. They are not by themselves those that do not have this understanding. There is a name given to them that are among this congregation. Proverbs 21. And we're going to read one verse. Verse 16. Because in order for you to get this understanding, you have to prove what team you're on. You're going to get the playbook. You have to have a contract uh, with the team that you plan on playing for. Mm -hmm. But if you have no contract, then don't be surprised if you don't have a jersey. If you don't have a jersey, don't be surprised if you don't play in the game. Because you are not in covenant with this team. Mm -hmm. You're in covenant with another team. Proverbs 21, and go ahead and give me verse 16. When you get there, go ahead and read. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. So when you wander out of the way of understanding, and you wander out of the way of understanding by breaking his commandments, go ahead. Shall remain in the congregation of the dead. You shall remain in a congregation, all right, because many of them still try to deal with God in worship and deal with some type of, uh, how can I say, uh, ecclesiastical dealings. You're still trying to deal in religion, but you shall remain in the congregation of the what? Of the dead. Of the dead. So there is a congregation that's living spiritually, and there is a congregation that is dead spiritually. Mm -hmm. Let's go take a look at this. Isaiah 59. Because in many, in many cases, their prayers are not being heard. And if they get something in this world, 
they don't understand that the Lord has given Satan a bargaining chip to give unto all those that's still wicked. I heard a rapper say, I think the Lord keep blessing me. I must be doing something right. Because <laughs> he's thinking that physical manifestations of blessings of what, they, what they're looking at is the carnal things, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and pride of life. They think that that is coming from the Lord. Now, realizing that Satan, just like he offered Jesus, that he'd give him a chance to rule in all these other kingdoms with him. Jesus said, no, I'm straight. Isaiah 59 and verse 1. So let's get an understanding why some people may not be getting their prayers or their supplications heard. Isaiah 59 and verse 1, when you get there, go ahead and read. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. His hand ain't short that he can't save. In other words, he has the ability. Go ahead. Neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. It's not like he can't hear you. He don't have a hearing aid where he cannot hear all your prayers and supplications. Go ahead. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. But that's what this is about. It's your iniquities or your sins or your transgressions that's separating you from the Lord God. In other words, he doesn't even want to hear your prayer. Go ahead. And your sins have hid his face from you. And your sins have hid his face from you. Go ahead. That he will not hear. He don't want to hear what you got to say. You come home dealing with your husband, but you smell like another man. You think he going to hear anything you got to say? You try to deal with a woman, but you are busy trying to celebrate your ex's birthday and try to esteem that unto her or what, your, what you did with a previous person with this person in regards to that relationship. You think she going to hear what you got to say? No. So it's your iniquity that's causing this schism. Go ahead. For your hands are defiled with blood. Your hands are dirty. Go ahead. And your fingers with iniquity. Look what you've been doing. It's all in your fingernails. Go ahead. Your lips have spoken lies. And you're going to come here and lie to me? Go ahead. Your tongue hath muttered pervertness. And you're going to speak crazy. You're going to mutter perverseness. Verse 4. None calleth for wisdom, for justice. So, th so th this right here is speaking to a nation. None of y'all are calling for justice. Go ahead. Nor any pleaded for truth. No one's pleading. Why isn't anyone telling the truth? Go ahead. They trust in vanity. They trust in a whole bunch of vanity, nothingness, exercises in futility. Go ahead. We're going to walk down some of these customs. Go ahead. And speak lies. And they speak in a bunch of lies. Go ahead. They conceive mischief. Uh-huh. And bring forth iniquity. They thinking and planning and plotting about mischief, and they are the ones that's bringing it forth. Go ahead and give me verse uh, 7. Their feet run to evil. Their feet run to evil. So it's not even like so you're saying that you're messing up, but you hear about wickedness going down, and you can't wait to involve yourselves in that evil. Go ahead. And they make haste to shed innocent blood. And they make haste to even shed innocent blood. Go ahead. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Everything that they think about is about sin and iniquity. That's why I made a reference about it's good that you can have a powerful computer, but what good is having all that computing power if the software has a virus? Your mind, the thoughts of your mind are the same as like your software. It's what's on the inside. Mm -hmm. It's good to have, you know, good, strong, solid uh, uh, external foundation. But if the inner workings of how you even process within, you can they say, get rid of the whole thing. I get a new one. Go ahead. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. Wasting and destruction. That's talking about at the end of your path, you are expected to obtain wasting and destruction. Go ahead. The way of peace they know not. They don't know the way of peace. Go ahead. And there is no judgment in their goings. Right. In other words, they don't know how to obtain peace at the end. At the end of the line is where every, all the judgment is given. Go ahead. They have made them crooked paths. They have made themselves crooked paths. Go ahead. Whosoever goeth therein shall, no, shall not know peace. Whoever following these wicked individuals, you will not know peace. Go ahead. Therefore is judgment far from us. Now, therefore as a nation... Judgment is far from you. Go ahead. Neither does justice undertake us. Justice does not catch up and overtake you. Go ahead. We wait for light, uh -huh. but behold obscurity. You in darkness. Go ahead. For brightness, uh -huh. but we walk in darkness. That's right. Go ahead. We grope for the wall like the blind. Right, because when you don't have the understanding of the commandments, you can't see why certain things are transpiring in your life. Go ahead. And we grope as if we had no eyes. Uh -huh. As if you have no eyes? Just like a blind man, the man in John chapter 9, 
had eyes, but they weren't working. But when his vision was open, he proclaimed who did the miracle to his eyes, but the people who had eyes could not even see that it was the Messiah or Jesus Christ that performed the miracle. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We stumble at noonday as in, as in the night. You stumble in the brightness of the noonday as in the night. Go ahead. We are, we are in desolate places as dead men. Uh, oh, we are in desolate places as what kind of men? Dead men. Because that's the congregation of the dead. Mm -hmm. A bunch of people that's committing sin and iniquity and thinking that the Lord is going to hear them for everything that they're praying for. Go ahead. We roar like bears and mourn sore like doves. Uh -huh. We look for judgment. But there is none. There is no judgment. Go ahead. For salvation, uh -huh. but it but it is far off from us. Right. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. Mm -hmm. They didn't understand that salvation was near unto them. Go ahead. For our transgressions were, are multiplied before thee. In other words, they got worse and worse. Our transgressions are multiplied before thee. Go ahead. And our sins testify against us. Uh-huh. For our transgressions are with us. Uh-huh. And as for our iniquities, we know them. That's right. Keep going. In transgressing and lying against the Lord uh -huh. and departing away from our God, right. speaking oppression and revolt. Speaking oppression and revolt, that's revolting and, and going against what the Lord said to do through transgression and lying. Go ahead. Conceiving and uttering from the heart words, words of, of falsehood. falsehood. Go ahead. And judgment is turned away backward. Right. And justice standeth afar off. Right. For truth is fallen in the street. Right. And iniquity cannot enter. And equity cannot enter. Equity is the Lord putting all things equal, making sure everything is straight, everything works out. Equity cannot enter to a people that's laden with sins and iniquity. So now let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at Proverbs 28. Because if truth is fallen, well, what truth is this that is fallen? Proverbs 28. And we're going to pick this up in one verse. Verse 9. Proverbs 28 and verse 9. Because what good is it to make supplications unto the Lord, but your hands is filthy? What good is it to come unto the Lord and say, Lord, why isn't this happening? Why isn't that happening? When you're looking at all the iniquity that you're bringing forth. Go ahead. Proverbs 28, verse 9, when you get there, go ahead and read. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law. Go ahead. Even his prayer shall be abomination. Even your prayer is considered wickedness. Why is that? Because you cannot take the name of the Lord God in vain. You are filthy, but you're expecting a blessing. No, that's considered breaking the third commandment, taking his name in vain. Mm -hmm. Now let's go a little bit further. Let's go to Proverbs 30. Let, let, let's hear him ask a question. And I like, I like how he poses questions because he's appealing to your reasoning. And this right here, like I said, this is one of those self-checks for you individually, but then at the same time, you could, when, when people try to proclaim Israel a little bit too much, they don't understand how wicked Israel was and why they're in this condition because it's about you accepting the punishment and then the Lord can turn around and deal with you. Proverbs 30 and verse 7, when you get there, go ahead and read. Let's hear this question. Two things have I required of thee. Uh-huh. De deny me them, not before I die. Right. Actually, this right here is not the question. This right here is a prayer. He's saying that I have a couple things that I'm asking of you. Go ahead. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Remove from me vanity and lies. Go ahead. Give me neither pro poverty nor riches. Don't make me so broke that I'm pov impoverished and in poverty. But don't make me so rich that I can forget God. Go ahead. Feed me with food convenient for me. Right, convenient for me. Go ahead. Lest I be full. Lest I get full. Go ahead. And deny thee. And deny thee. And say, who is the Lord? Right, now you think that you've done it all by your own hands. Like Nebuchadnezzar. Go ahead. Or lest I be poor and... Or or lest I get poor and what? And steal. Uh-huh. And take the name of my God in vain. Because if you're poor and you're stealing... Now when you are praying or you're taking the name of the Lord your God in what? In vain. In vain. For nothing. Because the Lord's not going to hear you when you're stealing. Mm -hmm. Because stealing is just one of the breaking of the commandments. Let's go to see what people think that taking the name of the Lord your God in vain is. Let's go to Leviticus 24. This is what they think it is, but I'm going to show a distinction. Leviticus 24 and we're going to pick this up at verse 10. Y'all getting something from this? Yes, sir. All right. 
Leviticus 24, verse 10, when you get there, go ahead and read. And the son of an Israelitish woman, whose father was an Egyptian, right. went out among the children of Israel. Right, go ahead. And this, and this son of the Israelitish woman and a man of Israel strove together in the camp. So, so this is a uh, uh, young Egyptian, because you are what your father is, is striving with an uh, Israelite. Go ahead. And the Israelitish woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord. Oh, but the Israelitish son, woman's son, blasphemed the name of the Lord. Go ahead. And cursed. Oh, and cursed. See, this is that vile or foul language that people think is talking about taking the name of the Lord, your God, in vain. This is that reviled language that he's bringing forth. Go ahead. And they brought him unto Moses. And they brought this, this one that was talking crazy unto Moses. Go ahead. And his mother's name was Shilomith. Uh-huh. And daughter of Debri. Uh-huh. Of the tribe of Dan. Yep. Go ahead. And they put him in ward that the mind of the Lord might be showed them. Right. In other words, they had to lock him up because they did not know what the punishment was for what he just did. So they had to wait upon the Lord to show what the punishment is for this cursing and blaspheming the name of the Lord. Go ahead. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Bring forth him that have cursed without the camp. Bring the one forth that have cursed. Go ahead. And let all that heard him lay their hands upon his and head. And the ones that heard him, because if you're going to bring an accusation, then you need to one that uh, execute the judgment. Because if you give a false accusation, that judgment is going to fall on your own head. Go ahead. And let all the congregations stone him. Let all the congregations stone him. Go ahead. Because this is when capital punishment was in place. This is the is uh, nation of Israel. They are not under the Romans, under the Grecians, under the Medo Persians. They are their own nation with their own rules and laws. So they had a capital punishment within that sovereign nation in the wilderness. Go ahead. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, uh -huh. Whosoever curseth his God shall bear his sin. Now, whosoever curseth his God shall bear his sin. But that's different from taking the name of the Lord your God in vain. Do y'all see that? Yep. Go ahead. And he that blas blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death. Uh -huh. And all the congregation shall certainly stone him, as well as a stranger, as he that is born in the land, when he blasphemeth the Lord, the name of the Lord shall be put to death. Right. Now let's get a couple definitions for the words curse and for blaspheme. We're going to read the highlight version. Go ahead and give me uh, the definition for curse. This is the, under the uh, same Merriam-Webster dictionary. Go ahead. To use profanely insolent language against blaspheme, cursing his God. Right. Insolent or uh, provocative language. Go ahead and uh, give me, ver if that's the end of that. That's the end of that one. All right, go ahead and give me blaspheme now. Oh, actually, there's, yep, there's yep. one more. Oh, hit, hit, that, hit that last yeah. part for curse. To utter Im imprecations, mm -hmm. swearing or cursing loudly. Right, because they were they were striving together. Now go ahead and give me blaspheme. Blaspheme to speak in a way that shows irrever irreverence for God or some or something sacred. Right. So remember, holy and reverend is His name. But if you're using words of irreverence, that's going the opposite. Go ahead. To speak of or address with irreverence. Right. That's the end of that? That's the end of that one. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I just want to walk down actual definition so when you hear these terms, it makes a little bit more sense. So you just have someone that was in the, in the heat of the moment talking crazy, which is different from someone praying unto the Lord for nothing. Mm -hmm. Let's go now to, let's go to Job 35. Because the Bible helps, <laughs> it walks down these distinctions and helps kind of dissolve all doubts. It makes the crooked path straight so you understand, oh, that's what he's speaking about. Mm -hmm. Job 35, because even Elihu, because it was a bunch of older people going back and forth thinking that they knew what they was talking about. But you had Job who was trying to, you know, really, how can I say, justify himself. But Job didn't blaspheme or curse the name of the Lord. But I'm going to walk down kind of what's going on. Job 35 and verse 13. 35 and 13, when you get there, go ahead and read. Surely God will not hear vanity. Uh-huh. Neither will the Almighty regard it. Right. So in other words, if you're praying in vain, he's not going to hear it. He will not regard it. Give me, uh, jump out of verse 16. Therefore doth Job open his mouth in vain. Therefore doth what? Job opened his mouth in vain. Job was opening his mouth in vain because he started puffing himself up. As if he was 
uh, 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 two bit, uh, I'll just put it like this, he was elevating himself. I'll just make it that simple. He was elevating himself and trying to justify himself against these accusations. But let's see what Job did not do. Go back to Job chapter 2. Uh, uh, is that the end of 16? Go, go ahead, finish it out. He multiplieth words without knowledge. Exactly. He multiplied all those words without knowledge. But let's see what he did not do. Go backwards to Job chapter 2, and I want to hear uh, verse 9 and 10. Let's see what Job did not do, because his wife came in and gave him a suggestion. Let's see what his wife's suggestion was in trying to uh, uh, help him uh, appease his grief. Like, get it over with. Job chapter 2 and verse 9. When you get there, go ahead and read. Then said his wife unto him, Does thou still retain thine integrity? Do you still retain your integrity? Go ahead. Curse God and die. Do what? Curse God. She suggested that he curse God and die. But what, let's see what the response was. Go ahead. But he said unto her, uh -huh. Thou speakest of one of a foolish woman speaketh. Uh -huh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and, sh and shall we not receive evil? Right. In all this, did not Job sin with his lips? Right. All this, Job did not curse God, and by that he did not sin with his lips. Mm -hmm. But later when his three friends or colleagues or acquaintances came a little bit later trying to figure out what's going on with your situation, because all this couldn't happen to someone that's righteous, but they didn't understand that the Lord was operating on a spiritual level in regards to using him as an example, but then turned around and he tried to justify himself so much that he multiplied his words and his words became in vain. Do y'all see that? Let's go a little bit further. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 58 because I want to go a little bit further with those that are seeking the Lord. And some are even rashing up the extremes to actually get his attention in their prayers and supplications. But with all this righteous act that they may, that men may see, he may point out, okay, you still got this problem right over here. You still got to address that over there. Isaiah 58 and verse 1, when you get there, go ahead and read. Cry aloud. Cry aloud. Go ahead. Spare not. Uh huh. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Uh huh. And show my people their transgression. You need to show my people where they're messing up at. Go ahead. In the house of Jacob, their sins. You need to show them their what? Their sins. Their sins, their errors, their blemishes, their iniquity. Go ahead. Yet they seek me daily. Yet they do what? Seek me daily. Every day they seeking me. Go ahead. And delight to know my ways. And they delight to know my ways. But knowledge is different from action. You can have all the information of, of, of how to drive your car, but if you don't know how to drive on the road, what good is all that book knowledge? They delight to know my ways. Go ahead. As a nation that did righteousness. As a nation. They not that nation that's doing righteousness. They're trying to act as a nation that's doing righteousness. Go ahead. And seek not the ordinances of their God. They aren't seeking my ordinances. Go ahead. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They want all the good stuff. Show me the ordinances of justice. But you won't seek the ordinances of his instructions for your life. Go ahead. They take delight in approaching to God. They d take delight in what? Approaching. In approaching. That's the theatrics. They always want to come before the come before the throne. Open the doors of the church. They they take delight in approaching. Go ahead. Wherefore have we fasted? Uh -huh. Say they. Well, I'll put it like this. Think of someone that always loves to ask for that paycheck from the job. You take delight in going to pick up your check. You take delight in, in using the benefits. You take delight in all these benefits that come from your work. But when it comes to the actual job description, you don't do any of it. So why should you keep taking delight in the good part when you won't even handle basic instructions? Go ahead. And thou seest not. So they're asking, why have we fasted and you don't see us? Go ahead. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? We keep afflicting our soul. Go ahead. And thou takest no knowledge. And it's like you don't even take knowledge of it. Go ahead. Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure. That's the response. In the day of your fast, you're doing all your pleasures. Go ahead. And exact all your labors. You're doing all your labors. You're doing everything you want to do. Go ahead. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate. Oh, you even fasting 
to try to get nigh so you could cause strife and to debate with someone. Go ahead. And to smite with the fist of wickedness. And to smite with the fist of wickedness. Go ahead. Ye shall not fast as you do this day. Uh-huh. To make your voice to be heard on high. Right. So you over here fasting that so I could kill this dude. Smite with the fist of wickedness. Go ahead. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? Did I choose this kind of fast? Is this the way in which I set this to uh, uh, to be uh, manifested? Go ahead. A day for a man to afflict his soul. A day for a man to afflict or or what we say, uh, go without food or water. Afflict his soul. Go ahead. Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush? Uh-huh. And to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Uh-huh. Will thou call this a fast? Well, you going to call this? You, you going to bring this to me and say that this is a fast? Go ahead. And an acceptable day of the Lord? And an acceptable day unto the Lord? Go ahead. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? Is not this the fast? Uh, actually, that's the end of, uh, end of that. I'm just showing how you can't just bring anything except and expect for the Lord to accept it. You can't just, I'll just throw something together. Here you go, Lord. You go in the kitchen. I'll just, you know, throw something in the microwave. Here's a hot pocket. No, you have to actually put in some work on this thing. Mm -hmm. You got to, uh, you know how they used to say back in the day, you got to put some skin in the game. Skin in the game. Mm -hmm. That's why even when it was time for David, when he turned around and the angel told him where the offering or the sacrifice should be made, he went to uh, the Jebusite, Ornan the Jebusite, and bought that land. Ornan wanted to give him that land for free. We said, I will not offer unto the Lord that which cost me nothing. Because what skin of the game do I have if I'm am I offer the place of his sacrifice and I get it for free? And I'm going to say, this came from me, Lord. No, it didn't. You have no skin in the game. Let's go a little bit further. Let's go to Isaiah 65. Because there's some fake fasting going on, but there's also, but that's food not going in your stomach, right? There's some fake worship with food going in your stomach. Let's go to Isaiah 65. Some fake worship with some fake reverence for the Lord that he says, I don't accept this. This is not acceptable. This, see, and this is the thing here. All of us are considered wicked in the eyes of the Lord. That's why all of us still needed that one individual to be accepted for us, which is Christ. Because all of us were uh, 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 under our sins still. All of us were under the cloak of death. But there was one individual that did this thing the right way. But this is also, like I said, one of those self-check lessons to see if all your works, if you are be, uh, obtaining the manifestation of, of the Lord bless you with understanding of the fear of the Lord that you can't just deal with him any kind of way the same way you can't deal with any other man any kind of way. That's why he, in Malachi, he asked the Levite, he said, you're going to offer up the blind and the lame? Ask your governor to see if he'll accept that. That's why coming to the Sabbath day, if I, when you put in effort in this thing, the Lord sees it. He sees the sacrifices you're making because you could be doing all the other cares of the world, but you're taking time this one day and giving it unto him, even though he's the one that's giving you all the days of your life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isaiah 65 and verse 1, when you get there, go ahead and read. Or verse 2, verse 2, go ahead. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, uh -huh. which walketh in the way that was not good. They are walking in a way that's not good. Go ahead. After their own thoughts. Uh huh. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face. Now that's, they come before him daily. They're provoking me to anger to my face. That's, that's like they're coming before the Lord. Go ahead. That sacrificed in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick. So they're doing, a, they're doing sacrifices. They're burning incense. Now, 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 what is this? See, a lot of people don't understand. These, this incense is another way of representing your prayers. You always burn an incense unto the Lord, but you dirty. So don't keep burning incense while you are defiled. And these sacrifices... Don't come and offer blood upon my altar when you are still filled with iniquity. Do y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Which remain among the, the graves uh -huh. and lodge in the monuments. What, what do you mean remain among the graves? Does this mean that they're playing around in the graveyard? Or does this mean that they remain among the congregation of the dead? They remain among the graves. Go ahead. 
which eat swine's flesh. What do they do? Eat swine's so flesh. So even what they're eating is wrong. Go ahead. And broth of abominable things in their vessels. Because he told them what not to eat, they turn around and eat it anyways and come to the house of the Lord. Go ahead. Which say. What, what are they saying? Stand by thyself. Hey, don't come near to me. I'm, I'm the bishop of the church. Don't come near to me. I'm the head evangelist. I'm the prophetess. Go ahead. Come not near to me. Don't come near to me. Go ahead. For I am holier than thou. For I'm holier than you. Go ahead. These are a smoke in my nose. These people are a smoke in my nose. This is not a sweet savor. When you offer up that instance, that prayer is supposed to be as a sweet savor unto the Lord. These people praying is like a smoke in my nose. Go ahead. A fire that burneth all the day. And that is an irritant in your nose. In other words, he does not accept or does not enjoy or in delight their prayers. Let's go take a look at this. Let's go to Ezekiel 33. Because they want to play church. Let me show you. They're playing church. But let's see the response. Ezekiel 33. And we're going to pick this up at verse 27. Ezekiel 33 and 27. You have, if you're going to grow in this world, you've got to have some self-check lessons. Because if you always want to deal with the prophecy and everything, you have to realize I got to be clean enough to take part in that prophecy. Because there, all Israel wants to speak about various scriptures in Isaiah 14, Isaiah 66, and this, this forth and that forth, but they don't realize that there's still a purging in the wilderness in Ezekiel 20. Because everyone wants the good stuff, but they don't want the self check, and the self check helps you grow. Sometimes when you have a coach that's on you, you turn around and you think, how much that they was on you because you have now grown in what you are uh, uh, meant to do. Ezekiel 33, when you get there, go ahead and pick up verse 27. Ezekiel 33 and 27, when you get there, go ahead and read. Say thou thus to them, unto them. So Ezekiel, say this unto them, go ahead. Thus saith the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God, go ahead. As I live, right? surely they that are in the waste shall fall by the sword. Uh -huh. And him that is in the open field will I give to the beast to be devoured. Right. In other words, y'all got some drama coming. Go ahead. And they that be in the forts and in the caves shall die of the pestilence. Uh-huh. Keep going. For I will lay the land most desolate. Because I'm going to lay this land desolate. Go ahead. And the pomp of her strength shall cease. Uh-huh. And the mountains of Israel shall be desolate. Right. That none shall pass through. Now that is actually mercy right there giving a heads up so that way they can... Try to self-correct, self-check, get the act together, go ahead. Then shall they know that I am the Lord. When I have laid the when I have laid the land most desolate because of all their abominations which they have committed. That's the whole reason Jerusalem was taken down, because of their abominations. Now in the days of Solomon, they had gold everywhere. They were they were decked out with all kinds of jewels and vittles and all kinds of different things that the Lord had provided them as a nation, but their iniquity will cause all that to mean nothing. Go ahead. Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses. Right. In other words, he's, he's letting him know that the children of Israel are still talking about you as far as, hey, let's go listen to the word of the Lord that he's going to bring. Go ahead. And speak one to another. And speak to one to another. What are they saying? Go ahead. Every one to his brother saying, come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. You ready to go to church this Sunday? We ready to go to church today. We ready to go to church. Come, let's go and hear the word of the Lord. Go ahead. And they come unto thee as the people cometh. As the people as the nation that had uh, uh, done righteousness. Go ahead. And they sit before thee as my people. And they even sitting before you as my people. Go ahead. And they hear thy words. And they will even hear your words. Go ahead. But they will not do them. But they won't do them. They turn around, turn to the Lord, and as soon as the sun goes down, they in someone else's bed sheets that's not their wife. Go ahead. For with their mouth, they show much love. They show much love with their mouth. Go ahead. But their heart goeth after their covetousness. But that software, that software is corrupt. 
It is malfunctioning. They're going after their covetousness, which is breaking the 10th commandment. Go ahead. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that have a pleasant voice. In other words, when it comes to what you're preaching, you're nothing but a song unto them. They love hearing the tune and the melody, but as soon as that music is over, back to regular life, what they was already doing. Go ahead. And can play well on an instrument. Uh-huh. For they hear thy words. They will hear your words. Go ahead. But they do not, but they do them not. But they do them not. Finish off 33. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. It's going to come. Go ahead. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. Right. In other words, when I take Jerusalem down and that destruction comes, then they're going to understand, oh, there was a prophet among us this whole time. Turning us from our ways, mm -hmm. but we wouldn't listen. Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel 20. Because there are, when you <laughs> read certain things that the Lord has put on the table, it sounds how practical his knowledge is. It makes sense. His ways are above our ways and his thoughts are above our thoughts. But when you see how he lays out the case, he's not expecting more of you. Uh, uh, in the big picture, he's really being very reasonable, so much so that he asks us to see if we will get the same behavior we're giving unto him, if we'll give it unto men of the world and see if they will accept it. That's very practical to me. Let's go now, let's go to Ezekiel 20 and give, and give me verse 1. Listen very carefully, because remember, it's not a, uh, this is not focused specifically on the name Jehovah, Yahweh, on Jesus, it's whatever the, because there's different names as, at different times. Right now in this country, I speak English, and we have the name Jesus. But there were different names that they had in different times. But it's all about calling upon the Lord, or what someone would say summoning, or trying to get his attention when you aren't right. So uh, Ezekiel 20, give me verse 1 when you get there, go ahead and read. And it came to pass in the seventh year, right. in the fifth month, the tenth day of the month, right. that certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord. Certain of the who? Elders of Israel. So now you have, because this isn't the whole nation, but the elders represent the, the, the nation in this instance. Coming before Ezekiel, go ahead. And sat before me. And sat before me, go ahead. Then came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, uh -huh. Son of man. Now Ezekiel has received a message from the Lord. And let's listen to the response. Son of man, go ahead. Speak unto the elders of Israel and say unto them. Right. Thus saith the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God. Go ahead. Are ye come to inquire of me? Uh, hold up. Look who's coming here now. Are you coming to inquire of me? Go ahead. As I live. As I live. Said the Lord God. Right. Cause it's like he's just giving the message to Ezekiel what to say to them. As I live, said the Lord God, tell them, Ezekiel. I will not be inquired of by you. I will not be inquired of by you. Go ahead. Will thou judge them? Son are, are you going to judge them, son of man? Go ahead. Son of man. Uh-huh. Will thou judge them? Uh-huh. Cause them to know the abomination of their fathers. Cause them to know the abomination of their fathers. Go ahead. And say unto them. Say unto them. Thus said the Lord God. Thus said the Lord God. In the day when I choose Israel. Uh -huh. And lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob. Right. And made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt. Uh-huh. When I lifted up my hand unto them. Uh-huh. Saying, I am the Lord your God. Right. In the day that I lifted up my hand unto them. Uh -huh. To bring them forth of the land of Egypt in the land that I have is, is, is spies, a a spot, yep. spies for them, uh -huh. flowing with milk and honey, uh -huh. which is the glory of all lands. Uh -huh. Then said I unto them. So when I took them, and when, when I rescued them, when I had taken down Egypt, when I turned around, is my mic working? No, it's not. I need another battery. But I'll keep going. When I had, go. give me a hand mic. Give me a hand mic. Okay, there we go. Um, give me one as a backup. When I tried to get their attention, I rescued them, I pulled them from captivity, I made them know myself by miracles, and they and, I, and what did I tell them to do? Go ahead. Then I said unto them, uh -huh. cast ye away every man the abomination of his eyes. Everyone cast away the abomination of your eyes. In other words, get rid of that idolatry. Go ahead. And defile not yourselves with, uh, with the idols of Egypt. And don't defile yourselves with that uh, with, with the, uh, what I said, idolatry. Go ahead. I am the Lord your God. Right. 
but they rebelled against me. But they rebelled against me, go ahead. And they would not hearken unto me. And they wouldn't listen, go ahead. They did not every man cast away the abominations of their eyes. That's right, go ahead. Neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Exactly. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them and, ac and accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. So I said, I'm a... You know, I'm a bust they head, but, but, go ahead. But I rock for my name's sake. But, I, whoo, let me cool down. I rock for my name's sake. Go ahead. That it should not be polluted before the heathen. That's not going to be polluted before, because if I, if I take them down, my name's going to be polluted before the heathen. That's saying that you brought them out of the land of Egypt, and you couldn't even sustain them in the wilderness. But I rock for my name's sake. Whoo, you know how you got to. You got to cool down. You got to step outside for a moment. <laughs> because the Lord is a man of war. It says the Lord is his name. Go ahead. Among whom they were. Uh-huh. In whose sight I made myself known unto them. Uh-huh. In bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. Uh-huh. Wherefore I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt. Right. And brought them into the wilderness. And I brought them unto the wilderness. Go ahead. And I gave them my statutes. Uh-huh. And showed them my judgments. Now that's the difference. There's people that are sitting in ignorance, but he's saying, I gave them my statutes. I showed them my judgments. So now if they are committing iniquity, it's with knowledge. Go ahead. Which if a man do, uh -huh. he shall even live in them. If you do his commandments, you shall what? Live in them. Because the commandments are ordained unto life. Go ahead. More, moreover, also, I gave them my Sabbaths uh -huh. to be a sign between me and them. I even gave them my Sabbaths. This is a sign between me and you. Go ahead. That they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. They'll know about me then. Go ahead. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in uh -huh. the wilderness. Uh-huh. They walked not in my statutes. They walked not in my statutes. I said I was going to reign them manna for six days. And on the sixth day, I was going to give them twice as much, and they leave some over for the seventh day, because that's the Sabbath that's holy. But some went out anyways and tried to get some more. They did not regard his statutes. Go ahead. And they despised my judgment, uh -huh. which if a man do, he shall even live in them. Uh-huh. Keep going. And my Sabbaths, they greatly polluted. They greatly polluted my Sabbaths. Go ahead. Then I said I would pour out my fury upon them in the uh -huh. wilderness uh -huh. to consume them. I'm going to... He said, I'm going to hey, stand back, Moses. I'm going I'm to kill them as one man. But he wrought for my, his name's sake. Go ahead. But I wrought for my name's sake. Uh -huh. That it should not be polluted before the heathen. Uh -huh. In whose sight I brought them out. Uh -huh. Yet also I lifted up my hand unto them in the wilderness. Uh -huh. That I would not bring them into the land which I had given them. Uh -huh. Flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Because they despised my judgments. And walked not in my statutes, right. but polluted my Sabbaths, right. for their hearts went after their idols. Because they had an idol in their mind. They are not going after my statutes. Go ahead and get, uh, jump to verse 19. I am the Lord your God. Uh -huh. Walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. That's simple. I am the Lord. Walk in my statutes. Keep my judgments. Do them. And do what? What else? Keep my judgments and do them. Right. Verse 20. And hallow my Sabbaths. And, and hallow my Sabbaths. That means make my Sabbaths holy. Mm -hmm. How do you make them holy? By, he said, don't focus on your own pleasures. Don't be over here focused on killing the fire and cooking on this day, mm -hmm. unless it's commanded like it's a feast day. Don't always be trying to uh, lay up with your wife on this day, because you could defy yourself in that manner. And you make this day holy. But... We know what all Israel's getting ready to do, almost all Israel. They're getting ready to hollow the wing. In other words, Halloween. They're making that a, not a holy night. Go ahead. And they shall be a sign between me and you, uh -huh. that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. Uh -huh. Jump down to verse 23, because I need to pick it up. I lifted up mine hand unto them also in the wilderness, uh -huh. that I could that I would scatter them among the heathen, right, and disperse them through the countries, uh -huh. because they had not executed my judgments. They have not executed my judgments. Go ahead. But had despised my statutes uh -huh. and had polluted my Sabbath, uh -huh. and their eyes went, and their eyes were after their their father's idols. Uh -huh. Wherefore I gave them all statutes that were not good. Uh -huh. So and he is walking down all these ways that he has set forth an example for Israel to listen to hearken and to obey, but they were just hard-headed. Now, we understand with our own reasoning that we would say, if I have a child, and the child asks me for a video game, but they keep bringing home D's and E's, isn't it practical for me to give them a video game? 
or whatever they're asking for at that time or allowance or whatever, if they aren't even adhering to the basics, why would I give you the benefits of being part of this household with all the, uh, uh, well, yeah, I'll just say the benefits. I'll just leave that there with everything that comes with it because it makes no sense for you to get what you want when you won't do the basis of what is required. The commandments are not the 10 suggestions or the 10 amendments, the 10 guidelines for life. They are the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. And we say when something is etched in stone, that means something that cannot be changed. Jump down to verse, uh, uh, verse 28. Uh, uh, yeah, 28. Let's go. For when I had brought them into the land. When I brought you in the land. This is the land of milk and honey, right? This is the children. This is this aren't the ones that died in the wilderness. When I brought them into the land, go ahead. For the which I lifted up mine hand to give it to them. Uh huh. Then they saw every high hill uh -huh. and all the thick trees. So when they got there, they see all the high hills and all the what? All the thick trees. Go ahead. And they offered their their sacrifices. They offered where? In the high hills and under these thick trees. They are gonna offer their sacrifices under the tree. Go ahead. And there they presented the provocation of their offering. And uh, they presented the what? The provocation because they're provoking the Lord by their offering unto this idol. Go ahead. There also they made their sweet savor. Uh-huh. And poured out their, dr their drink offerings. Uh-huh. Then I said unto them, what is the high place whereunto ye go? Uh-huh. And the name thereof is called Bama. Uh-huh. Unto this day. Unto this day. Go, keep going. Wherefore said unto the house of Israel, uh -huh. thus said the Lord God. So all this was to let them know this. Go ahead. Are ye, pollu are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers? Are you acting just like your hard-headed fathers that I killed already? In other words, you taking their place? Go ahead. And commit ye whoredom after their abominations? You're going to keep commit the same whoredom after their abominations as if I won't bust out on you? Go ahead. For when ye offered your gifts, uh -huh. when ye made your sons to pass through the fire. When you made, because the Israel even that, did that wickedness where they made their children pass through the fire. In other words, they offered their children for a fire sacrifice. Go ahead. Ye polluted yourselves with all your idols. You polluted yourselves with all your idols. Go ahead. Even unto this day. Uh -huh. And this is all for the elders of Israel to take note of. Go ahead. And shall I be inquired of by and you? And shall I be inquired of by you? O Go ahead. house of Israel. Uh-huh. As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. Because your prayer is in vain. Your supplications are for nothing when you're breaking every commandment he has given you and commands you to do. You have disregarded them and now you have become disregarded also in the times of your calamity. Amen. I hope y'all see this clearly. Teach. How does it, so they could be doing some things he said as far as sacrifice, but let me show you how he looks at these things. Let's go to Isaiah 66. Some of these things that you could be doing that you that it may be aligned with the book. Some of these actions or, or these works of the law. But I'm going to show you how it could look. Isaiah 66, and give me verse 4. When you get there, go ahead and read. I will also choose their delusions. And th this is w when it's time for the drama. I'm going to choose your delusions. So there's a, there's a man of sin around right now, or uh, uh, how can I say the position. He's going to use that individual to bring about some drama. I will choose their delusions. Go ahead. And will bring their fears upon them. And will bring their fears upon them. Go ahead. Because when I called. Oh, there's a reason. Because when I called. Go ahead. None did answer. You ain't want to listen to me. Go ahead. When I spake. When I had something to say. Go ahead. They did not hear. You ain't want to hear what I had to say. Go ahead. And they did evil before, the, before mine eyes. And they did evil Right in my face before mine eyes. Go ahead. And chose that in which I delighted not. And they chose to do what I told them not to do. That's what it means when I delighted not. Now jump up to verse 3. Let's see what this behavior is considered unto him. Verse 3. He that killeth an ox is Cause at... Because the ox, is that's allowed to be killed. That's a clean animal, right? Mm -hmm. But the one that's wicked that's doing it, he that kills an ox, go ahead. Is as if he slew a man. It's like you just killed a man to me. Go ahead. He that sacrificed the lamb. So someone, because sacrificing the lamb is good to do at that time when it was commanded. But the wicked one doing it, what is it like? Go As ahead. If he cut off a dog's it's neck. It's like you cut off a dog's neck. What good is your sacrifice unto me when you don't do nothing I say? 
Go ahead. He that offered an oblation. Someone that's offered an oblation, go ahead. As if he offered swine's blood. It's like you just offered a swine or a pig unto me. Go ahead. He that burneth incense. Someone that's, because that's prayer. Incense represents prayer. He that burneth incense, go ahead. As if he blessed an idol. It's just like you are blessing your idol or dealing with, with idolatry. That's the same as someone taking the name of the Lord God in vain. Go ahead. Yeah. They have chosen their own ways. Uh -huh. And they're so delighted in their abominations. Because you're still stuck in these abominations. Now let's take a look at uh, Proverbs 1 and let him re-say it again. Why he is not listening. Now we've just been born in a generation where we aren't necessarily getting direct action from the Lord when we, when we call upon his name. But we know that it's going to return and he's going to uh, uh, be there to 